These days, it seems like a new trend rises and falls every week. But I think there is one trend that is here to stay. Cute little succulents in cute little plant pots. I mean, come on, who doesn't love these little guys? And you know, it got me thinking. I have a 3D printer. I can probably design a cute little plant pot in like 15 minutes. I want to see if I can make a profitable sidewalk business out of 3D printed plant pots here on the Venice Boardwalk in Los Angeles, California. Probably the street vendor capital of America. But first things first, we got to design some plant pots. Plant, plant pots. Let's do it. I wanted to include a succulent with each planter. So I stopped at Home Depot and got 27 plants for $144. That's about $5.30 per plant. I got mostly small and medium ones because it seemed like those would sell the easiest, but I also splurged on two large plants to see if those would generate a larger profit margin. All right, let's design our first plant pot. Timer starting now. So we're in Fusion 360 and I'm going to create a form, specifically a cylinder. And we want the diameter to be similar to what we have for our existing plant pot, which is about three inches. So we'll go three inches there. We want a fair amount of diameter faces so that we have a lot of resolution to create our spirals. At this point, I should probably tell you that I have a detailed video on how to design plant pots in this style. For the purposes of this video, we're just gonna breeze through the design, but if you want a step-by-step -step breakdown on how to design these, you should check out that video. All right, back to the design. So first things first, we want to select all of these height faces, and since we have circular symmetry, if I double-click one, we select all of them, and we're going to crease those edges. We want to select an entire column of faces, and I'm going to edit form. Going into a top view, I'm going to click and drag this square while holding Option or Shift if you're on a, a Windows PC. And that allows us to extrude this outwards. We're just adding a little bit of three-dimensionality so that we get access into these interior faces. These are the ones we want. I'm gonna zoom in and select an entire column of faces. And we're at a minute and 45 seconds of design time. Going back into Edit Form, we're just pulling this around so that we create a peak. Doesn't have to be exact, no use wasting time on this part. Then we're gonna select the next set of faces. This was previously the inside of that crease, but now it kind of looks all wonky. Trust me though, it's the right face. Edit form, top view, pulling this around to the other side. All right, so now we have this cactus looking thing and we can begin to create our profiles. So I'm gonna go into this side view. I'm going to select this center line. Since I'm selecting through, I'm actually selecting the whole perimeter and I'll go into edit form. Now we want to scale this up because this is going to be like the fat part of our profile. Um, I'll select the next face going up, back into edit form, expand this a little bit to sort of match the profile. Next one up, edit form here. I kind of want a little bit of a neck near the top. So make the next one up just a little bigger so that we kind of have a flare. There's no real like formula here. It's just a matter of, you know, experimenting, figuring out what you think looks good and, you know, following that instinct. I think these plant pots look really cool. That's why I think they're gonna sell. And every time I've designed these, I've just sort of had a vision in mind. Right now I'm thinking of this kind of like modern Venetian pot um, with a twist in it. Hopefully you see what I mean. We're at four minutes and 30 seconds of design. I think that, I think that might be it. That's kind of the shape I'm going for. So now we're gonna start twisting. I'm going to select everything except for this bottom section. You can see that that's all selected. Edit form, and we're going to add a twist. So I'll grab this wheel and pull it around by, yeah, let's say 35 degrees. So as you can see, it acted on that lower section because it's not the one we selected. It propagated a little up into the next one but now we're going to select everything except for the bottom two. We'll do the same thing, edit form, except this time I'm going to twist it by five degrees less the one on the bottom. So last one we did was 35. This one we're only gonna twist by 30. Now I'll select this. We're gonna pull it around by 25. I think you get the pattern at this point. There we go, there's our curve. I love this shape. It reminds me of like a flowing piece of fabric sort of combined with pottery. Nice, we're pretty much done in the create form workspace. We are at 
eight minutes and 55 seconds, we can finish form, boom, converted successfully. Now we need to turn this empty cavity, as you can see, it's fully empty into a closed body. So we'll create boundary fill, which does exactly what it says. Select cells, hit the check mark, and we have our body. Nice. So I'll turn off that empty cell, and now we need to create the inside of the plant pot. So, little trick here. We can't just use the cavity tool. It's too much complex geometry, it will fail. So I'm going to create a sketch on top. I'm going to project that top shape. Double click to select this sketch, and we're gonna offset it inwards. So then we can just click inside of there and extrude this slightly down so that we have a nice upper lip. If you want more details about why exactly I'm creating the inside in this way, you should just go watch the, uh, the detailed video. But just trust me that we can't simply use the cavity tool, it just straight up will not work. Nice. So that gives us our top edge. And for the rest of it, we're going to create a smooth surface. So I'm gonna create a uh, section analysis. Oh, I love these. This is what, like one of my favorite parts of Fusion. It is so handy to be able to see a cut through of your object. Then we're gonna create a sketch on this plane. I'm going to draw a spline and we're gonna try and match this thickness down the shape. So basically I'm creating the inner wall of our plant pot and the major thing is making sure that it's not too thin anywhere. Again, we don't wanna poke out of the side. There we go, we got a closed shape. Revolve that around the center axis. All right, oh, that actually looks really good. Okay, you can see that, let's turn off the uh, analysis. We sort of cut into our nice upper edge there. So I don't want that. I'm gonna go back into my sketch. Where are we at time-wise? We are at 13 minutes and 53 seconds. Back into our sketch. We wanna pull this point out a little bit so that we're not cutting into there. Let's pull both of these out. Okay, that's way better. Turn the section analysis back on. Like you can play around with that spline and try to make it as thin as feasible. But if you don't really, if you're not being too stingy about filament, which I tend not to be, I mean, that looks pretty good to me. Don't waste time on details that don't matter. Final thing is creating our drainage hole on the bottom. Um, I think like three quarters of an inch is usually pretty good diameter for a drainage hole. Right click, extrude, pull it through, and time. Finished the design, 14 minutes and 50 seconds. Pretty good if I do say so myself. <laughs> I thought it would be a good idea to have a few styles of planters available. So I spent another 15 minutes designing this one that has a bit more of a bowl shape. And then I went back into my archives and chose one of my favorite ones that I designed in the past. Now, obviously I had already put in the work to design this planter, but for the purposes of calculating how much I'm making per hour on this project, I added another 15 minutes of work to my running total. Now, if you've watched my videos in the past, you'll know that I normally use relatively expensive 3D printers, but every planter in this video was printed on the Elegoo Neptune 4, which at the time of this recording only cost $229. Now, Elegoo is the sponsor of this video, but I am genuinely so impressed with the quality of this printer for the price. First off, it arrives in like five chunks, which are super quick to assemble. I think I had the first test print going 45 minutes after opening the box. This Benchy printed in only 22 minutes, and look at that quality. This printer is fast and full of features. The Neptune 4 can print up to 500 millimeters per second. It has 121 point automatic bed leveling. It comes with a removable bed, a 300 degree Celsius high temperature nozzle so you can print in all sorts of materials. Pretty much everything you would want on an entry level 3D printer. Click the link in the description to kickstart your 3D printing journey with Neptune 4 from Elegoo. I spent the last five days feverishly printing plant pots. I had the printer going pretty much 24 seven, averaging about three plates per day. And at least for these smaller ones, I was able to fit three pots on the plate. But for these big guys, <laughs> this was a single plate print. Physically setting up each print, you know, arranging everything on the build platform, starting the print, taking the pots off of the build platform, that probably took an average of five minutes per plate. So let's call that an hour for physical work with the 3D printer. And repotting the plants into my 3D printed pots took another hour. And I printed everything in a variety of colors. White, marble, this sandstone, 
and sage green. Honestly, I love this color selection. It matches the succulent so well. I'll put links to all of this filament that I used in the description. Oh, I also printed like four extras, just in case someone wants to buy plant pots on their own with no plants. I'm thinking of pricing these at $15 for the small ones, $20 for the medium ones, and let's say $25 for the big guys. There's only two big ones. I think most people are gonna wanna buy the small ones. I mean, if you're shopping for your desk in a small apartment, I mean, come on, these are so cute. Look at that, man. I don't know, I have my own biases and favorites, but I'm very curious how the public is actually gonna receive this and what is gonna sell. Let's go to Venice Beach. All right, we are all set up at Venice Beach. It is a beautiful day, a little cold by Los Angeles standards because it is the end of February, but there's a ton of foot traffic. We got our plant set up. We have the 3D printer going, which I hope will draw some people in. And we stopped at Staples to get some poster board to make a sign. I also 3D printed some two-toned little signs here. So far, we're getting a lot of curious looks, but we've only been here for like 15 minutes. So I'm feeling optimistic. It's already a great day. This is so fun. So we're set up from this sidewalk cafe right now and I think all these people sitting here are just like watching us set up and watching the 3D printer and we must have had like 10 people so far come over who were just so curious by sitting there having a meal for 30 minutes and wanting to know what was going on. So not just the foot traffic but like this captive audience is really, really helping us. Yeah, go for it. Thank you. Yeah, it's a pretty amazing technology. How many times for finish one? So one takes about three hours. No, no, yeah. But this big one takes about nine hours. Uh, yeah. Touch? Yeah. Wow, it's great. Yeah. Wow, it's crazy. How long does it take? Uh, so one of, this one is printing about this size and it'll take around three hours. It's this very interesting social phenomenon. There'll be like 10 minutes when no one comes by and then all of a sudden two people come in and then two more people come in and this little just group forms because everyone wants to see what everyone's looking at. I'm super impressed with how good the printer is doing outside. We're having no bed adhesion issues. We're probably like two thirds of the way through the print and it's looking fantastic. I like the vase, but then I like the plant. I mean, I could try to repot them, but it's a little, uh, yeah. little finicky. I also have a couple more. Um, the white vase. Yeah. You like the white? Yeah. I'll take that one. Yeah. This one? All right. Thank you. My pleasure. Enjoy. Making money. for four hours, how many pots have you sold? Uh, I think two. <laughs> we sold two of the small ones and made $30. Does that cover our parking? Almost. <laughs> I'm not gonna claim to be an expert, but street vending is hard work. We spent seven hours and $178 on this project to make 30 bucks. And that doesn't even include the fact that I had another person helping me at the boardwalk, so imagine you had to pay that person's wage. Now you could say we should have spent more time there, it was only my first time, we'd make more money the more we went, so that initial investment would pay off over time. But I think one of the most surprising explanations came from a street magician that I met while selling on the boardwalk. He makes his money by gathering large groups of people and then performing tricks, asking for tips, and he was saying that he actually avoids doing it on the Venice Boardwalk because there is so much going on, there's so much for people to see that it's really difficult to get people focused on one thing. He tries to do it in less crazy areas like the Santa Monica Pier where he can be the most interesting person on the block. It's kind of like if you've ever been to a really good art market, you see all these really interesting, amazing, wild things, but you leave without buying anything even though the quality of everything was so good. 
We had probably a hundred people come by, marvel at the 3D printer, think that the plant pots were really cool, but then they got you know, distracted by something else and they went on their way. The sociology and marketing psychology of this experience was so interesting. How you draw people in, how a small crowd forms a bigger crowd. Having the 3D printer there was huge. That was probably the main thing that actually brought people to the table. But man, I have so much respect for these street vendors. I was watching a lot of the others during the day and they also only made a few sales for the most part. I am very curious about the economics of being a street vendor. Obviously I'm a rookie, but if you're a street vendor or if you know someone who is, I would love to hear about your experience in the comments. I think one of the most difficult parts about selling art or handmade goods on the street is that it's a very specific product. You know, someone's walking on Venice Boardwalk, they're probably not thinking about buying an artistic planter. Then they see one, they might think it's cool, but it's a big leap to then go and purchase that. Whereas if you're selling at somewhere like a maker's market where people are going specifically to, you know, buy handmade goods or buy art, I think you would have a much better chance of success. I really don't even care about the money. Those four hours on the boardwalk were so fun. We had tons of people come over just mind blown seeing a 3D printer in action. I find it amazing how a lot of us assume that 3D printers are ubiquitous now. You know, they're so much more popular than they were 10 years ago, but so many people have still never seen one in operation and they're stoked to see one actually working. A common theme was people saying they never understood how they worked until they saw it in person. But the moment they saw it printing, they immediately got it. In the end, we ended up giving away the 25 plants that didn't sell to passersby on the boardwalk, to the ladies next to us who were selling tacos, and I'm pretty sure they turned around and sold them with their tacos. They were straight hustling. And I gave them to friends and family as housewarming gifts. All of those people were so excited to get them. It kind of solidified for me. Maybe selling stuff on the street isn't for me. Maybe I'll stick to making YouTube videos. <laughs> but if you wanna print these plant pots, if you wanna sell them or if you just want them for yourself, I'm putting them all available for free download on printables.com. There'll be a link down in the description, so go for it. Do whatever you want with them. And if you want to directly support this channel, you can do so on Patreon. You'll gain exclusive access to my behind the scenes Instagram account, my private Discord community. You'll see what's coming up, what projects I have in the works. I would like to give a special thank you to my top supporters on Patreon, Paige Arlt and my mom, Kathy Kurt. Thanks mom, I love you. Also, if you're curious, we are in Sequoia National Forest. Not many Sequoias around though. Hendon Death Valley today.